Farmers have been suffering the effects of social and ecological damage for years because of the lack of soil development and decreased yield of crops, affected by the use of chemical inputs and genetically modified seeds in agriculture. Farmers began to practice sustainable farming methods without harming the ecosystem and living things, including humans. When they realized the health and social economy were damaged due to farming methods that used too many pesticides and fertilizers. Some farmers practice sustainable farming techniques and some people are sharing knowledge with the farmers in far off regions who can learn and apply these techniques. The Lisu ethnic minister, Thong Mary, is one of them. She guides natural agriculture techniques to ensure a sustainable and healthy life lifestyle for the Lisu farmers from where she lives. Thirty-eight-year-old minister Thong Mary is a part-time development officer at Potsa Lisu Baptist Church, and an executive at Lisu University of Theology, Pian U Luen. Who lives in Potsa Village, the Beijing Township, Mandalay? She is encouraging the farmers from where she lives to apply chemical-free natural agriculture while she is working for the church. Young people from Potsa are not interested in becoming farmers, even though the inhabitants depend on farming for their living. Farmland and the soil is being destroyed, and crop yields are declining because of the herbicide use. She heard about the farmers' difficulties in agriculture while discussing with them. Then she wanted to sort out their needs. Minister Thong Mary is not only a farmer, but also has studied organic agriculture abroad. She shared with the local farmers how to make organic fertilizers, knowledge about seed species. And technologies to increase local products. In Potsa, farmers plant perennial crops like banana, mango, orange, and grapefruit commercially, but they plant seasonal crops on a modest scale. It is like corn, bean, choy sum, kale, and rosel sour leaf. Farmers are challenged by the fact that perennial plants cropped for commercial purposes can only be harvested for a limited time. The plants made good yields at the start of their three to five year fruit bearing cycles. The plants have eventually dried up, stopped producing, and perished. I realized that our area soil problems have has only begun. I knew the soil issue would come up to a farmer, Minister Thong Mary said. Excessive herbicide use decreased the soil's quality and shortened the perennial plant's lifespan. In addition, a result of too many trees being felled is the disappearance of beneficial insects. In this situation, the overuse of the herbicide resulted in an increase in dangerous insects that harmed the plants. Farmers use herbicides when they expand their farmland. They no longer have confidence in farming without herbicide and think it is essential, she said. Then she offered chemical-free organic agriculture techniques training, so that farmers could learn and practice. No matter how she promotes organic agricultural methods, the farmers who lead in agriculture's participation rate are still low. She persuaded them anyways, as she believes that the farmers who make decisions should be mainly involved in changing the agricultural system. Region, the only person who would comprehend and be able to express how the soil quality has declined and how plants are living shorter lives is someone who works with plants and the soil daily. She continued, "It was challenging to convince, but the farmers who realized the advantages of natural agriculture techniques began to join her. Following the training, the far women farmers organized into groups and practiced non-destructive farming methods such as natural insecticides." Minister Thong Mary is also trying to preserve the local seed species and implement sustainable natural agriculture techniques in her region. I've been discussing the importance of 
local seed species with church, youth, and kids. And I had informed those issues with the Lisu Christian farmers from other regions and our local farm groups, she added. It is imperative to protect native species in Myanmar to prevent their extinction. If not, farmers would suffer as other species took the place of the seeds left behind by their ancestors, she warned. Native seed species are better adapted to the climate and ecology of Myanmar and offer additional advantages such as fewer fertilizers and pesticides required, increased resistance to insects and severe weather, and higher nutrient content. Some local seed species are on the verge of extinction due to the influx of modified species. Agricultural specialists caution that genetically modified organisms, GMOs, can result in the issue of gene pollution, and it may also produce uncontrollable weed problems, also known as superweed, as a chain reaction that may also be harmful to people's health. When farmers plant GMO seeds, the traditional practice of maintaining local species is lost. In this situation, seed selling companies are rich, but the local farmers are left with losses because farmers can't breed the seeds themselves. Thong Mary said, local seeds can be saved for next year and planted this year, and it may produce high quality nutrients. If we didn't conserve organic seeds, GMO seeds would replace them. While studying agriculture in Thailand, she also studied seed conservation techniques, so she returned to her hometown to collect and preserve local species. In 2022, the Potsa Christian Church started a local seed collection and preservation program to live a sustainable life. She encouraged the farmers to keep the remaining local seeds in the seed bank after planting. She shared seed species preservation methods during her preaching time in the church, and she discussed it with the farmers too. She said, The farmers bring me seeds at my request, and I exchange them with my collection, and we held workshops related to it. There were many difficulties in establishing a seed bank in our region. She started with young people and children when building a mud storehouse to keep the seeds because farmers had less enthusiasm. A few women helped it. It means that there is still a lack of interest in the seed bank and consumer education among the farmers, she remarked. Seed conservation is the seed extraction process from vigorous local plants grown yearly. And every step of this procedure is crucial, from choosing the soil to the cultivation site and the storage method. There were numerous steps involved in preserving for the long term, including collecting the seeds, drying them, purifying them for genetic purity, storing them, retaining the data, and conducting germination. They have collected and preserved approximately 22 species usually grown in the region, such as beans, corn, pumpkin, cucumber, choisum, eggplant, tomato, and fennel. They set one day a week for receiving seeds from farmers to collect more seeds. The seed banks are located in Potsa from the Beishen Township and Lisu University of Dharma. Bien U Lyun, she is willing to share about establishing seed banks to appear more seed banks in other regions too. She said there are various species everywhere. The locally nutrient-rich species had to conserve to remain. We all have responsibility for that. I will provide the technologies to those who are interested. She also mentioned that she has prepared seeds for farmers who couldn't plant or harvest because of the instability in their region. Using genetically modified seeds is more expensive than systematically collecting, maintaining, and planting the local seed species. Also, local seed planting will reduce the damage to the agricultural ecosystem. She is teaching the Dharma to the locals as a minister and pressuring the farmers to adopt sustainable 
chemical-free farming practices. That is what I am serving for God. I believe that I must give them this perspective. Minister Thong Mary said, As a minister, I must help and say to them that only being healthy, self-sufficient, and having a full stomach enables us to serve the gods. A happy and healthy community can only be achieved when everyone works together to be, as well as humans, the wellness of earth and nature. For this reason, Minister Thong Mary expected local farmers in our region to be healthy and secure food, withstand climate change, be sustainable agricultural land, and the young generation would survive in the local community. Minister Thong Mary, I will be satisfied if the soil returns to its original state in our region and the natural nutrient-rich fruit comes out.